All right, I'd like to bring this meeting of the West South West Milwaukee School Board to order. Ms. Carr, would you please lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Suzette, would you please call the roll? Mrs. Carr. Here. Ms. Deal. Here. Mrs. Kaiser. Here. Mr. Burns. Present. Mr. Becker. Here. Mrs. Lee is excused. Mr. Sickett. Present. Mr. Keller. Here. President Lee. Here. Proper notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the open meeting laws of the state of Wisconsin. Are there any modifications to the agenda this evening? There are no changes this evening. Okay, then we'll move right into the superintendent's report. Great. Um, good evening, everybody. We will start with 6.1, which this evening is the legislative update. So the Senate committee um, sets hearing on financial literacy and opioid antagonist mandates. Uh, the, so that committee will take um, public comments at a hearing at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, May 23rd, tomorrow in room 330 at the state capitol on legislation that includes Senate Bill 115 requiring one half credit of personal finance financial literacy for high school graduation. So we're watching that one, but it is already a requirement for us. Um, under current law, school board may grant a high school diploma to a pupil only if the pupil meets specific statutory requirements, including earning a certain number of credits in various subjects in the high school grades. Um, the assembly committee sets hearing on bills relating to teacher licensure, new instructional mandate and advisory committee membership. So the assembly committee will hold a public hearing on three bills after voting to recommend two bills from a previous hearing. The committee will meet at 9.30 a.m. on Tuesday, uh, Thursday, sorry, May 25th in room 417 at the state capitol. Uh, in the executive session, there's AB 109 financial literacy requiring one half credit of personal financial literacy. So it's in kind of both chambers. Um, AB 024 child abuse hotline posting the child abuse and neglect reporting hotline in school buildings. Um, the public hearings are AB 099, teacher teaching licenses, so maintaining a lifetime teaching administrator or pupil services license, AB 246, advisory committee membership, so the membership of a human growth and development curriculum advisory committee. Um, and there's actually some um, NEOLA updates in the um, first readings of policies that the board will Review this evening and AB 232 Hmong American instructions. So directing school boards to provide instruction on Hmong American and Asian Americans. Um, 6.2 is the board of recognition, board of education recognition. So from the superintendent, first, thank you to Amanda Stewart and the executive team members for honoring teachers with a special lunch on Thursday, May 11th. Um, it was part of teacher appreciation week. Um, and so there's some recap footage that's in an active link here. It's been up on our website and on social media. Um, but Amanda did an amazing job organizing food trucks that showed up at every single site. Um, we tried to use as many that are local to West Dallas as possible. There weren't quite enough. Um, and then there were some that you know ended up being ice cream trucks. So where we had ice cream trucks showing up, we sent pizza. And where we had um, a hamburger truck showing up, we sent ice cream <laughs> to balance it all out. But it, the feedback was great. It was, I think, a, a really nice surprise um, that I think, and it was a beautiful day, so teachers could be outside when the food trucks were there. So it worked out really well. Uh, I also want to recognize our high school students that received academic honors um, at, at this time of year. So recently was um, Hale. Uh, but we celebrate the, you know, I think it's important to celebrate the achievements of scholars and the way we celebrate the achievements of our athletes and musicians and performers that, you know, get applause and accolades um, when they're out in public um, and, and spending some time doing that for the students, and some of which are also athletes and musicians and performers that are really high achieving scholars for us. And then for communication, great work uh, through the West Dallas, West Milwaukee Recreation and Community Services, De Services Department. They hosted their second annual 55 plus senior prom at the Recreation Center on Friday. So they served an early dinner, um, followed by hours of dancing to a live band, and it was 120 attendees. Um, so I think that's a pretty cool thing that our community does. And then 6.3, <clears throat> really quick updates and information items for me. So during our last meeting, that was May 8th, we heard from two members of the public, one comment about the picnic at Longfellow that took place this past Saturday that was part of remembering the legacy of Longfellow. Uh, and uh, it was a beautiful event as just part of the transitioning as we go through school consolidations. And we also heard a comment that was related to matters which have already been addressed. So there's nothing new to add there. 
And then last piece uh, for me that given that this is actually our last regular board meeting before all the end of year events. So we don't meet again until the 12th of June. Uh, so I want to take a moment to congratulate all of the fifth graders that are moving on to intermediate school, the eighth graders moving on to high school, and in particular, our high school seniors <clears throat> who are moving on to the next phase of their lives. Right, so graduation is on the 10th, um, Saturday the 10th for the two big high schools and that Thursday prior for Daki. Uh, for our seniors, you're entering a world that needs kind, caring, focused people. And we know you will carry the mission and vision of our school district into your lives and share it wherever your journey takes you. And I just want to say congratulations to all of our graduates because this is our last chance before they move on. And that concludes the superintendent's report. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we will move on to item seven, our public comments for this evening. Um, as a reminder, if you would like to address the board, you can have three minutes to do so if you sign up on the online form for those in person. For those who are watching via Zoom, there should be a link uh, in the chat to be able to sign up. You must state your name and your address before you begin. There will not be any back and forth uh, discussion with the board, but if there's a simple item that can be clarified or question answered after your comments are completed, uh, we may do that. Otherwise, any uh, further uh, response will be done by the next regular Board of Education meeting. In addition, I'm going to uh, read the following as a reminder of uh, individuals wishing to comment are expected to comply with the following norms in order to maintain a respectful and orderly meeting and prevent discussion of confidential matters in a public forum. Comments should be directed to members of the Board of Education and not district employees, students, or the members of the public in attendance at the meeting. Speech that is belligerent, disorderly, disruptive, repetitive, threatening, or which exceeds the allowable time for speaker is Concerns or questions that entail the disclosure of identifying information regarding specific students or employees are prohibited. Mm -hmm. Response from the board, if any, will be limited to clarifying and accurate information, making sincere efforts to redirect complaints about specific or confidential matters to the appropriate complaint procedures, seeking additional information from the speaker or acknowledging that the speaker has been understood. The board will not debate with an individual and the board may not take action on an item raised during public comment that is not on the meeting agenda notice. The chair will interrupt and rule an individual who violates any of these norms out of order. If ruled out of order by the chair, the individual's opportunity to address the board will end immediately and the microphone will be turned off. Finally, the district is not responsible for the comments of an individual public commenter. And each commenter makes his or her com statements accepting full responsibility for legal consequences of the same. Thank you for your participation and your courtesy. So with that, start with our first person signed up, which is Ms. Colleen Stepp. My name is Colleen Stepp. My address is 3175 South 42nd Street in Milwaukee. Um, I have been a Spanish teacher at Nathan Hale since 1999. And in my tenure here, I've earned a master's degree from Alverno College and have traveled between Hale, Frank Lloyd Wright and Lane teaching uh, the seventh grade level 1A up to Spanish three. This year, I was honored with a distinction of Profesora Distinguida, or Distinguished Professor, Distinguished Teacher, from the Wisconsin chapter of the American Association of Teachers of Spanish and Portuguese. Also throughout my tenure, I have weathered the storms of Act 10, including the elimination of salary schedule, pay freezes, minimal raises, units as a requirement for employment, a global pandemic, and countless initiatives and reworkings of the curriculum. After Act 10, other districts either maintained salary schedules or fair compensation for their teachers, while West Dallas did not. West Dallas did maintain a retirement package that provided incentive to stay the course, but that also has changed. Our average teacher salary and average fringe benefit package are among the lowest compared to comparable districts in the area. In the last five years, five of my beloved Spanish teaching colleagues left to teach in neighboring districts, each for a minimum of $15,000 pay increase. Each had their master's degree and over 10 years of teaching experience. Each were involved in advising school clubs and activities. Each tried to negotiate with the West Dallas West Milwaukee School District for more pay, and each were thanked for their service. Those of us who teach world languages have not had a well-developed curriculum or textbook for over 10 years. We spend our own money on authentic materials, resources, activities, et cetera. During the summer of 2020, I spent $300 and 60 hours in virtual professional development. I purchased an online curriculum and have purchased a portion of the curriculum that I will be presenting to you later this evening. 
I have also attended countless conferences on teaching world at my own expense, including using sick days or personal days to attend. I am only one person. Each teacher in our district has a similar story of time and money spent to best serve the students. Our workloads have increased. We have lost prep time and now have duties. We tolerate more challenging teaching environments in which extreme dysregulation, profanity, and violence are apart. Emergency licenses are issued to teachers to teach in areas in which they are not trained to fill positions that are difficult to, to fill. The teacher shortage is truly a crisis. I listen to 80 to 90% of the school board meetings via Zoom. Teacher compensation and attracting and retaining good teachers is a regular topic of discussion. Our faculty should be rewarded for their loyalty. Better pay will help attract and retain a certified, high quality, diverse group of teachers to serve the West Dallas, West Milwaukee students and families. When Milwaukee has approved an 8% increase and Wauwatosa has approved what equates to a 12% increase, West Dallas, West Milwaukee should be able to move from the 4.7% starting block and approve at least an 8% increase for its teachers. Thank you. Thank you. James Parnow. My name is James Parno. I'm a high school history teacher here in WAWMSD. I'm also a sergeant in the United States Army. I've served honorably for seven years now. And I just wanted to inform all of you that uh, from what Did I you say understand- your address? I'm sorry. Did you say your address? Oh, my bad. Uh, 1580 North Farwell Avenue. Thank you. So I just wanted to inform all of you that uh, from my understanding, from all of the teachers that I talk to every day, whether it's in the school I work at or other schools, if you uh, decide to go against the uh, DPI recommended raise of 8% and, and go any lower than that, I genuinely don't believe you will have enough teachers to effectively staff a school district next year. Um, I guess I just wonder if you understand how big this emergency truly is. I mean, we already have classes where when the teacher isn't there, the students just sit in the lunchrooms or in the auditorium. I mean, it's an absolute mess. It is something to truly be embarrassed about. And I also ask you uh, to really just crunch the numbers with basic finances. I mean... As far as I'm aware, I think I might be one of the only starting salary teachers at my school that can even afford to live by themselves without roommates. Everyone, everyone else I know on my salary has either a roommate or lives with their parents or something like that. I think the only way that I can survive on the salary on my own is because of my military pay in addition to my salary here. And I guess I just want to leave off by asking you what kind of, I guess I should say, what kind of effective employees are you hoping to find by uh, paying them the amount that you do and them thinking that that's, that's something they'd like to do after going to college for four years? I'm just wondering, where do you expect to find people who are willing to accept anything like that? And uh, those are just some questions that I would really like you to consider. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Bridget Gaboy Helfenstein. Hi, my name is Bridget Gaboy Helfenstein, and I have been a, an employee at West, West Dallas, West Milwaukee Schools at Nathan L High School for 32 years. I'm invested in this district. Um, oh, my address. You yes. bought my address. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, 32, what's my, what's my address? 3690, <laughs> I'm like totally thrown off here. 36901 uh, Bridalwood Lane, Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Thank you. Sorry about that. I'm invested in this district and I want to see us continue to produce great students. I do fear for the future of our district due to the teacher shortage and due to, to the wage structures that we have here. Um, when I started in 1991, our district was one of the highest paying districts in the state, and currently I've been told that we are one of the lowest paying districts. This concerns me because so many of my colleagues are leaving or have left due to, in some cases, the working conditions, but also the pay. 
This brings us to the knowledge that our competitors, the surrounding districts like MPS, have already approved the 8% CPI, and TOSA is doing some kind of a workaround, a creative means to be able to raise their salaries to, by 12%. And we're looking at 4.7 here. So my former colleagues who've left the district over the past several years all had at least 10 years of teaching experience. As my colleague Colleen said, they were highly involved in our school in activities and sports and things like that. They also had master's degrees and they left our district to go to other nearby districts for a minimum of a $15,000 pl um, plus raise. Um, our former colleagues are now recruiting some of our current colleagues to move to those districts. And all of this movement really affects the stability of our schools and the continuity of our students' education. This concerns me. I'm very concerned about the retention of my colleagues who are already invested in our district, who continue to bring great talent into our classrooms daily. And I hope that the board will consider offering comparable wages and benefits as our neighboring districts with similar populations. And I hope that they will, you will consider to go above the 4.7 um, increase that right now you're offering, I believe. And I just wanna say thanks for your support. Thank you. <clears throat> Steve Broadwell. <clears throat> Steve Broadwell, 12965, West Ohio Court, New Berlin. Uh, last September, I asked in an open records request if the district uses a guide titled Schools in Transition, a guide for supporting transgender students in K-12 schools. <clears throat> the response to my ORR was, we have not received or used this guide. Earlier this year, a teacher sent me an article published by Parents Defending Education. The article noted that your response to their public records request in January in which they asked the same question I asked was that this district does use this guide, adding that it has been shared among student services staff members over the past few years. So I submitted another OR with the same question. The response to me again last month was no. I this, then sent you the article PDE published and asked you to look again. I guess third time's the charm is you finally fessed up. I do understand your selective memory regarding my request. <clears throat> the board's embrace of the radical left anti-family agenda you would rather not highlight is unmistakable in so many ways. This guide is a prime example in that it is a product of five militant LGBTQ advocacy, advocacy groups, including Gender Spectrum that on their website recommend deceptive practices for those potentially dangerous and unsupportive parents that don't immediately affirm a child's gender confusion. Other far left, left groups involved in the publishing of this guide are the Human Rights Campaign, the National Center for Lesbian Rights, the ACLU, and the NEA, all of which want to push the transgender goal, uh, cult's destructive ideology into ever younger minds. The guide states that privacy and confidentiality are critically important where students don't have support at home and any hesitancy to immediately uh, affirm is dangerous. The guide states that what school that schools should help students transition without parents knowing by explaining that the school and students should determine how to proceed through the collaborative process of figuring out how the school can support the student and balance the student's need to be affirmed at school with the reality that the student does not have that support at home. The guide also explains that schools should create a tailored gender transition plan that intentionally withholds information from parents. It also blames any psychological problem a child is exhibiting on not being affirmed, any problem. This guide is full of nonsense regarding this social contagion. It not surprisingly makes no mention of the tragic short and long-term effects of puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and bodily mutilation is exposed by those honest professionals that dare speak out against the militant trans cult. For anyone believing in family, this guide is alarming. You don't own our kids. By locking arms with group like, groups like these, you have shown a willingness to undermine the authority wants and beliefs of parents.
Okay. Uh, Adam Melster. Um, Adam Melster, 8439 South 76th Street in Franklin. <clears throat> Not difficult to fill. This was the written description of my current position given to me by this district's director team regarding my request for a salary review that was denied for the 23-24 school year. I was given a contract for the 23-24 school year with the same salary as last year with a salary that was significantly lower than any neighboring district in our area. Being my fifth year in this district and six year, six year as a professional educator, I feel that my base salary has not necessarily increased at the steady compensational rate. This is in a district where 42.8% of their teachers are in their first five teaching years. Once they hit year six, the percentage is cut in half to 23.6%. It's almost as if the teachers in those demographics are not being supported enough to stay after year five. But my position still isn't difficult to fill. This year, Pershing has had difficulty finding an art teacher for their school. They currently have a long-term sub in place to fill this position. One applicant was hired and then quit within one week of holding the position. Not difficult to fill. The art teacher at Lane Hale quit her position in the middle of the school year to seek a job somewhere else with higher pay. There is currently classes left without a teacher this school year. Not difficult to fill. The art teacher at Central will not be returning this after this year as well. Not difficult to fill. There seems to be quite an issue with turnaround not only in this department, but within this district. It seems there are quite a few positions that are difficult to fill. I've invested a large amount of effort in the overall environment of FLW. I personally painted several murals and art installations within our school building to update the general atmosphere of our rather deteriorating space. <clears throat> I co-planned and illustrated the official rebranding of the primary and secondary logos of FLW and portions of their merchandising, as well as the WAWM's art department official logo. I'm also a member of our school's mental health awareness and suicide prevention organization, Hope Squad, to which I also designed new school merchandising and a logo for. In the past two years alone, I facilitated, designed, and illustrated two new murals for our school's STEAM community and branded their community's up-and-coming greenhouse project. All of these projects have been completed pro bono. If a designer were, were have been brought into these projects, it would have cost the district thousands of dollars. Not difficult to fill. I have six years of teaching experience, five of which are in this district. I have been a loyal employee of the West Dallas West Milwaukee School District, specifically at FLW. I have made connections with students that I never could have imagined, and I am grateful for the time here. However, connections do not pay bills. I am making $46,000 a year. It is my understanding that this year alone, first-year teachers who join mid-year are starting at $50,000 with a $4,000 sign-on bonus. With insurance taken out and taxes, one of my paychecks is as much as when I was working in a fast food restaurant. I have a son at home. This should not be happening. We are professionals, experts in our fields, and literal leaders in our craft. I ask that we are paid what we deserve respectfully, which is over 8%. Keep your teachers. Otherwise, all your positions will be considered difficult to fill. Thank you. Thank you. That is all that we have signed up for public comments this evening. So I will close public comments at this time. We'll move on to item eight, our board reports, starting with 8.1, which is our review of the board calendar. So today, uh, May 22nd, we have a regular board meeting, immediately following a closed session meeting. On June 12th at 6 p.m., we have a regular board meeting and then a financial stability and efficiency workshop, the 22-23 budget amendments and proposed 23-24 budget and preliminary tax levy number two. Immediately following that, we will have a closed session. On Monday, June 19th at 6, we have a board workshop. And on Monday, June 26th at 6, we have a regular board meeting an action on proposed 23-24 budget and preliminary tax levy number two. Moving on to 8.2, our board committee reports. Starting 8.2.1, employee engagement and culture. Mr. Keller. All right, I just have to find that now. One moment, my apologies. Here we go, thought I had it up. All right, so our committee met last week on Tuesday, um, we talked a little bit about teachers contracts. Um, there was a May 1st deadline for that. 51 teachers were notified they will not be returning uh, or notified us they will not be returning. 38 of those are resignations, 13 retirements. Uh, four administrators will not be returning, um, six support school specialists and four EAs and steady EAs will not return from retirements. Uh, we talked a little bit about interns and limited term hiring. Um, we had five individuals on limited term contracts that have accepted regular contracts for next year. 
and two current interns have accepted contracts for next year as well. Um, and then we are still actively hiring uh, individuals for the fall. Uh, we did go through our yearly salary re-evaluation process. All employees who applied were notified on Friday, May 12th. Um, and then we uh, went over our reduction in force process again as well. And that was it. All right. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Keller regarding his report? <clears throat> or any items to be considered on a future agenda for his committee. Seeing none, thank you very much, Mr. Keller. Thank you. And that's the only community report I have for this evening. So I'll move to 8.3 board member reports of community events. And actually we also have a season mode update. Ms. Deal, did you want to do that update oh, first? Yeah. Mm -hmm. we'll um, to the community events after that. Sure. So I just wanted to give, a, a, I went to the annual convention for uh, CISA as our rep uh, last week, Tuesday. Um, so I just wanted to inform you guys about a couple of things. So I have the annual report. If anybody from the board wants to take a look at it, um, things of note just for anybody in the district is that there will be two conferences and I'm sure you, that some of this information is shared, but there will be the EMLSS uh, project conference. It's form formerly the PBIS leadership conference. That's August 8th and 9th in the Wisconsin Dells. Um, there's also the Wisconsin CISA Career and Technical Education Summit, August 10th and 11th um, this summer in Wisconsin Dells. So two things that um, if employers or people are interested in, I can support, share, uh, share that information. Um, also just, um, this was something I wasn't aware, but CISA does provide executive coaching for principals, directors, and district office leaders. So just another resource out there just for people to know about. Um, and the other cool thing um, is that CISA is going to be actually um, in July of 2023, they're going to be um, launching their e-campus, which is going to be basically online courses that educators can take um, for a minimal fee. Um, and I actually went on there. I mean, I'm not an educator, but I went on today. And actually, if you go on their website, it pops right up and it says, hey, here's our course catalog. And I clicked in and there was, I counted 40 different courses for different, all different things. Um, I think one of them I clicked on was like $125. It's all online, all like go by as you, as you want kind of thing. So, um, yeah, so that was what we did at the meeting. Um, and then like I, I got to network with a couple of our area um, uh, school board members and that was, it was enjoyable. So if anyone would like any of this information or would like to look at the annual report, um, let me know. Thank you very much, Ms. Deal. Does anyone have any questions regarding the CISA meeting? Okay, does anyone have any um, community events that they attended they'd like to report on? Yes, uh, Mitchell had their grades three, four, five concert last Wednesday. I did cry once, but it was wonderful. And um, it's been a pleasure watching these kids grow up and just um, lots of she, the our, the school choir director, Miss Moore. Wonderful that she let the couple of grade levels just create their own thing. The kids like, create, like okay, we're going to play on the bang bongos and we're going to do a harmonica. And it was really cool to see that. Um, she gave this creative student voice and choice to a whole classroom and the kids did amazing. So mm -hmm. just want to say thank you for all that. All right. Thank you very much. Anyone else have any events that they attended? Ms. Carr? Um, uh, well, there were a lot of uh, presentations of learning going on at the end of the year. And so I did go, um, I stopped at Hoover and I stopped at Lane and I stopped at Pershing and um, at, for their presentation of learning. I'm gonna take a second to just talk about Pershing because obviously I was really interested in, um, you know, were they um, using the deeper learning competencies and are we seeing it and uh, is there evidence of it? Because I hear about it a lot, but, and, and there sure were. Um, one of the things that I wanted to point out was, um, well, first of all, one of the teams did sound canceling headphones. They created them and then um, from whatever, and then you could try them on. And then the thing that I really liked best was that you could just give feedback. So anybody that went could give feedback on that. And um, then the kids went back and they did another iteration of it and um, went back to making another um, prototype, which I thought was, was wonderful. And then there was something, um, one of the third grades did
did such a nice job of balancing between kind of old school, new school, which I, I believe in. Um, they had those trifold boards that we know the science trifold boards. And there were there were pictures and there were, um, you know, um, handwriting and practicing your handwriting and making it look presentable. And it was lovely. But then on those trifold boards, you could actually grab your phone, go to Spotify and listen to their podcasts. And the podcast was a debate on which animal would survive um, based on the research that they did. Oh, cool. So, uh, yeah. So when when I see things like that going on, then I'm I'm more assured that um, our, we're on the right path with the deeper learning competencies. So I went to um, a lot of schools. I also did go to Longfellow and I had been there for um, several years. So I was a bit choked up. It, it was... It was an end of an era, but um, I thought they did an excellent job of encompassing um, all the years, and um, it was it was delightful. All right, thank you, Ms. Carr. Anyone else, Ms. Steele? Yep. Um, so I went a couple to a couple of things. So one, I went to the Lane um, the Spring Band concert, which was really good. Um, the kids did really well. I think it's just amazing, like. I was actually sitting next to Mr. Becker at it and I looked at him like, man, they sound like 100% better from their winter concert, which just amazes me. Um, I also uh, was able to attend um, actually Madison. Uh, well, first of all, I just wanted to do a shout out to all of our PTAs and everyone who honored our teachers during Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, we did some really, they did some really great things. Um, and so actually for at our uh, Madison, their PTA, we. Um, um, they always invite parents to come in and volunteer for the lunch hour so that our teachers can all eat together. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And then at the end, we got the kids all rallied in the hall. We lined them up in the hallway. And then as the teachers came in from their lunch, um, they, we, they did a clap in for them. So they shouted and clapped out. So that was really fun. Um, I also was able to attend the Madison and Walker Color Run um, last week. And I got to throw a blue color at kids. And it was a lot of fun, except for I had blue hands for about three days. Um, and then the last thing I just wanted to mention is um, I was able to participate in the Lane Career Fair, which they had on Friday. Um, it was really, it was really interesting. So I presented about careers in psychology and my own career path. And the kids asked a lot of really good questions. Um, they were very respectful. So that was a lot of fun too. Um, so um, I would invite anybody who, if you're able to, obviously Lane won't be there next year, but FLW always has a career fair and the kids just really love it. Of course, they, they want tangibles and stuff like that. So I had lots of fun stickers and bracelets and things to give out to them. So kind of attract them over to my my table, but um, it was a lot of fun, so. Awesome, thank you. Anyone else have any events they would like to report on? Mr. Cracker? As mentioned, I made it to the Lane Band uh, concert, which was just as Ms. Deal said. Um, you can see the improvement, which is really the exciting thing uh, between that, uh, uh, the all city concert, the solo concert, or the, the solo ensemble they had uh, central. It has been really a joy to watch uh, the, way, the way our students uh, progress over the years. Um, I also made it to a Longfellow event and I had a couple of nice conversations with faculty and uh, a family that I didn't know uh, actually went to that school. A couple of kids on a baseball team that I helped coach. Um, so it was nice. And, and they, had, they were telling me that a lot of former teachers and uh, and students had come in as well. So it was just, it, it was nice to see the, the, the school celebrated. Great, thank you. Anyone else have any events they would like to share? All right, as always, I'll go last. Um, I was able to attend the Central Orchestra concert on Tuesday. Um, it was, a really good concert and they actually did uh, lose their their teacher about a month and a half ago and so um, even despite that they had some fantastic um, music they learned in about four weeks time that they performed and they did really well. Um, Dr. Luxemburg was honored there for all his support and, and playing he does with all of our music students and programs here uh, so that was great to see. Uh, so it was another wonderful representation of music opportunities we have here in our district um, on display. I also was able to attend um, not the entire uh, program, but uh, for Hale's honors that they had last week as well. 
uh, and see all the different scholarships and uh, the departmental awards, I think, are, are really interesting to see the, the teachers select the students uh, in each kind of one of the departments, which ones I think they did uh, the best. And so that was that was great to see. I was planning to attend the same program for Central, which was the very next night, but uh, we had an agenda uh, meeting that went extra long that night. Unfortunately, I was not able to, to make it, but my wife was there because she was giving a PTA scholarship and she said that it was also a very, very good event. So I just wanted to mention that as well. Uh, I also was at the Longfellow uh, event on Saturday. Beautiful weather. I don't know if you could have scripted that any better. Uh, there was a really fun event, but people who came there who had graduated from the 70s, um, some of the teachers had like classroom pictures up from all the years that they had been taught there up on the wall. Uh, so it was really interesting. And then a lot of people wanted to go for the, the tour of the building. So a lot of people came for that from 11 to 30. So very, you know, Breck was there. They had food. Uh, PTA uh, sponsored that event. So very good event. Um, a good representation of the community there at Longfellow. And so I was glad that I was able to, to be part of it. And I also attended Hoover's uh, three, four, five uh, music event that was on Friday um, last week. So uh, it's cheating because my daughter was in it, but I did, I did watch all of the programs that were there as well. And they also did a fantastic job. Okay, so then with that, I'll move on to 8.4. Other updates, information items. I don't have anything of, of note other than say that Dr. Robinson is here with us this evening. He'll be here in the district for the next few days. Um, and we'll be participating in the closed session meeting with him uh, after the business portion of the meeting this evening. So moving on to nine, our consent agenda. We have 9.1 approval of minutes from a regular Board of Education meeting on May 8th and our board workshop on May 15th. 9.2, the employment summary. 9.3, supplementary contracts. And 9.4, our financial summary. Does that mean anything separated out? If I look for motion, move to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, that passes. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to take a moment and uh, thank first the board. You just approved Laura Sproul and Brian Summerfield as moving from interim principal to principal in their respective buildings. And as we um, do, is a tradition um, to welcome and congratulate new principals, uh, allow them an opportunity to um, say a few words to the board and the community as they step into the role permanently. So first, Laura, if you wouldn't mind. I don't have anything long. So if you set the three minute timer, don't bother. It's all <laughs> I just want to say over the past year, I've really gotten to know Hoover as a community. I've grown to love the community that's there. I've had so much fun. There's been fun. There's been challenges. Um, it's been busy. It's been um, a really great learning year for me. And I am so honored to be able to stay at Hoover and to make it my, um, I guess, official home at this point, and to be able to continue the work that we've started this year and to continue to move Hoover forward. So I just want to say thank you. I'm honored. Congratulations. Congrats. 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 And Brian Summerfield at Central. I'm like Laura, mine will be about 10 minutes. Get <laughs> comfortable, please. Uh, I'm going to reiterate what Laura said. I wanted to first say I got some notes here, but, but thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be at a building like Central. Um, I've worked at several buildings in several districts. Um, this is my fourth year at Central, uh, first year as an AP, and Central is truly unique and special. Um, thank you for allowing me to work with a leadership team that truly wants what's best for students and staff. Uh, thank you for allowing me to work with a staff that at any time has just this faith in each other and trust in each other, um, whether it's uh, helping sub, supporting a student that's struggling, or even helping out a challenging situation that we need any kind of help with after school, before school, the staff steps up. And thank you most of all for letting me work with the students at Central. Um, Central is special because of our students and it's true diversity, whether it's racial, socioeconomic, sexual orientation, um, the way kids treat each other is, like I said, different than any other building I've worked at. I've worked at a few. Um, when you go to the cafeteria, 
um, whether it's athletics, going in the classroom, watch the way kids associate with each other. Um, Dr. Robinson's coming tomorrow, and I'm looking forward to kind of seeing more of that and see the way kids treat each other based on friendship groups and not perceived affiliations to predetermined groups. Um, that's what really makes uh, Central special. Um, that being said, we have an incredibly long way to go. Um, we need to start taking the culture growth we've had and turn that into academic achievements, whether it's uh, ACT outcomes, social emotional learning, attendance, and most importantly, making sure students leave Central High School with a plan to be successful and live independently. But I think uh, we can do that. I'm really honored to have the opportunity to work there and continue that vision. So thank you. Congrats. Congratulations. Congrats. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I'll move on to um, item 10, or actually items this evening, 10.1 uh, is our first one, mindfulness course adoption for the 24-25 school year. Ms. Ray Mary Massage. Uh, thank you for having us tonight. This has been a labor of love for uh, the both of us for quite some time, as it's a course that when we started doing town halls in the middle of virtual instruction and all those things, the kids kept saying to me, like all of this work we do around mindfulness or these activities are great, but we need more. We need longer. We need more and more and more of those sorts of opportunities. Um, and then this year, Laura really came back and said, no, we've got to put that on the agenda now. Right, We're seeing an increase, obviously, in the mental health needs of our students across the nation and certainly in our district. We're seeing our students become really good advocates for themselves. And a big part of that is through all of our deeper learning work. But we still have students who are struggling to find their place and where they belong. And so they're looking for additional strategies. We have tons of students now who are seeking opportunities to go into the field of caring for others. And this is a launching point for that, for them to understand that at a really deep level. You guys got to hear from some of our hope squads last week. Kids are anxious to learn more about when to, mental wellness and how they go about planning for that for themselves. So we are proposing that we add a mindfulness course as an elective, um, not required for graduation, but certainly an opportunity for students and families who are interested to the course catalog. Remember that the course catalog for next school year is already done and ready to go. The course catalog for the following school year gets published soon here because we start making selections in November for the following school year. So this course would be one that we would make available to students now. And then we go through the process of creating curriculum and doing all of those pieces this summer so that it is ready to go when students select it for the full following school year. Um, we've had, I shared this in the exact summary, but we had a number of teachers ex um, ask for the opportunity to attend something called Breathe for Change, which was about all of these sorts of practices and how to embed them more into the classroom. Um, one teacher in particular, um, she not, you know, she said, I'm in a totally different department than would normally take this, but I feel like for myself as an educator and for the students I serve, I need this and it's refreshed her in a super interesting way in the course of doing her work. So it'll be a lot of the resources that come through the Breathe for Change organization. Laura's taking the class right now so that she can help guide all of that work. Laura herself has had a stretch goal here to try to learn how to help write a course <laughs> <laughs> and continued opportunities to do so as she works with the team this summer. So Laura, I'll pass it over to you to add some of the details if you want to share anything else and then otherwise we'll answer questions. Sure. Well, I know many of you, I feel like for a moment we should kind of sit. No, I'm just... <laughs> Um, but you know, you know where it's at as far as the mindfulness. I've brought that to the board. I've brought that to staff. Um, many opportunities for, for that to be shared with students. And I feel like we're ripe for the time, as, as Deidre said, that uh, mental health for our students, a healthy way uh, to be able to be present, to be able to learn to self-regulate, to get focused, to be able to be kind to one another, uh, extremely important. And the kids are asking, asking, asking for it. Um, I've had the opportunity to kind of see a similar sort of program in action. And in so doing that, uh, out in Washington State, there are some high schools that are offering a mindfulness class. And one of the side benefits when I talked with the people out there that they never thought would happen was, it, I mean, and I get to do this, I'm old school with those of you who are familiar with the Breakfast Club movie. Yeah. Um, it's kind of the idea of like the kids who then take mindfulness as an elective, it might be 
AP kids. It might be kids who are looking at it for their sports. It might be kids who are um, kind of struggling with some mental health issues or, or special needs or different, different, just kind of kids from all different pieces of the community coming together to really kind of learn some things for themselves, but become a community within that space themselves. And then bringing that connection, that openness to being uh, to see each other for who they are and to be decent with each other back to their groups within that school community. That was the piece that they very much said. They, they expected what was going to happen as far as like every individual learning mindfulness. What they didn't expect was that community piece to branch out and become a part of that um, fiber of that community within that school. And so between those two things, it was, it to me, it felt like there's no way we couldn't not offer this. Um, so I don't, if anyone has any questions about what we're looking at at this point with what that would look like or how how we would move forward with this. I'll just add one thing to it. Right sure. now on the forums, usually we say exactly which department it's gonna fall under. Um, the Department of Public Instruction is investigating right now who teaches this um, because they said really anyone can teach an elective, but it depends on where you put it in the course catalog, how it gets credited on a student's transcript. And we would be the only people with a course in mindfulness as an elective offering in the state. So it's not a problem that the Department of Public Instruction has yet had the opportunity to tackle. So Adam's been in communication with a number of people to make sure that we're putting it in the right place in the course catalog. So that'll all get done before the course catalog gets published, assuming the board approves the course tonight. Questions from the board? Yeah. So depending on how many students sign up, how will you train teachers to teach this particular course? Mm -hmm. um, part of it is going to come from what category it's going to fall under. Um, so that would be a piece of it. But the Breathe for Change is a significant piece of the information that we would be using for the course, uh, as well as uh, some other curriculums. And so um, I also am a mindfulness trainer, but that's a little bit different from mindfulness trainer teaching a tra teacher to, be, to teach mindfulness. Right. Um, so as Deidre said, we have a number of uh, high school teachers who have already taken the Breathe for Change class that they would be ready to go um, and are actually somewhat interested in should this come to pass, um, that would, that would kind of help explain because obviously we wouldn't have sessions where it's like we'd have a mindfulness teacher and that's what they did all day long, but that they would potentially be teaching classes in whatever else they do and they'd be able to do the mindfulness piece. So we could get creative with it. Okay. And it's one of the things we wrote into the course proposal as the cost, is that whoever teaches the course has to take the, the brace for change. So they have to commit to taking that coursework. Mm -hmm. um, it's not hard. It's just, there's a lot of hours. It's not hard. <laughs> but it's not hard. And they offer it in the summer and during the school year. So that shouldn't be a huge barrier. But we did put that as part of the cost, is it's really taking that course for a number of instructors or for the people that are going to be working on it, and then the curriculum writing hours to put it all together unit by unit. Question. I don't have a question. I just have a comment. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I was just going to say that um, I'm I'm very happy that this is coming up. Um, just because, um, yeah, I under we understand that the schools we we need to teach reading, writing, and arithmetic, but our kids are whole people, and so we need to be addressing you know some of this mindfulness, some of our you know just that kind of stuff and self care, um, and you know how to regulate yourself and stuff like that. So um, I I work on an inpatient behavioral health unit. Um, and I've talked about this course with actually adults and they've been like, that's so awesome because I wish I would have had that when I was a kid. Um, and I work with teenagers who, um, I can definitely say that they, um, they benefit from mindfulness practice. And, um, a lot of them, I, I think that it's, it's, it's something I use with my own children. And I think that it's, it's worthwhile. And especially if the kids are asking for it. So I'm, I'm very happy to see this come up. Any other questions or comments? One thing that I'll say is I'll be definitely interested in the data of who signs up for the course once it's made available right. next school year, mm -hmm. um, or the, not next school year, but the year after that. Right. Right. Um, just to see, you know, you know how many, and if we see enrollment grow, if we see that we only offer it once a year, and now we have to offer it twice a year, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, because I agree, I think the more opportunities that we have for giving. Uh, 
people's strategies to deal with everyday life uh, is only going to benefit and can help in innumerable innumerable ways other issues that we deal with in schools may be reduced because of that so I think it'll be important I don't want to call it marketing but to make sure that we get information out to students all students about what the what the benefits could be and um I you know I think it'll be important so that it's not like that we're kind of tuning into just certain areas of encouraging mm -hmm. it's not only for students who are looking for um improving their mental health <laughs> um it's really a life skill so sure yeah, so part of that, we'll be meeting with all the counselors to be sure they know which courses are new this year, which courses have been dropped, and then highlighting this one mm -hmm. so that they can better explain it to families that it's available to students to sign up for, for an elective. Motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. Any last minute discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, that passes. Thank you very much. We'll move on to 10.2, our math resource adoption for elementary. Ms. Sage can go, Ms. Raymer must stay. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here for a few minutes now, this one and a few more. Um, so this is as a follow-up to the workshop we had last week. Um, as you know, the math team, I feel like we've been talking about this elementary math adoption for several years because we have, um, and we've been trying to pace it at a time in which our teachers were ready to take on something of this magnitude, a whole new resource to adopt and to get familiar with in the classroom. But the teachers have landed on the recommendation for into math. Um, remember from the workshop, the key things about into math that ended up tipping the scales on that one as compared to reveal is the number of resources the kits all come with the online platform that allows for a lot more progress monitoring and collection of data and helping kids create a pathway for themselves within mathematics. And then also the professional development and the training, which is really, really solid and is able to start as soon as school lets out for our staff that are um, ready to take to volunteer to sign up for that training in the summer, which will be paid time for them if they do it during the summer and off contractual hours. So they dropped off more materials today to get ready. And I'm pretty sure um, Matt, who offered to come tonight again, who I said, no need, um, will also be getting those orders in ASAP because he knows we want them in teachers' hands and plenty of time for them to have the time to investigate the resource at their leisure throughout the summer if they should so choose or ready to go for sure when they're back in the fall. So it is our recommendation that we adapt into math as our core resource for grades 5K through fifth grade, remembering that 4K is still included in the scholastic resource. Um, it's 4K my way, and that include when we purchased classic included both the literacy and the math components in that one. So this one starts at 5K and works its way through fifth grade. Questions from the board? Her husband. Uh, proof. Okay. Second. It's moved and seconded. Any last minute discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, that passes. Thank you very much. All right, so Colleen and Kirsten are gonna come up to help us with our world language adaption. Um, this one we chose not to go forward with a workshop on because A, it's a little bit of a smaller, thank you, Kirsten, a smaller adoption and um, B, the, it doesn't affect every single student, right? So it's when things we don't necessarily by policy have to bring forward every adoption. They're just the ones that touch every single student, but it's been our historical practice and our board is very invested in what are the resources we're using in our classrooms. So we are bringing this for, one forward now um, straight to adoption. Um, but I will take a quick second to pull up the slides if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Yeah. Um, so I am Kirsten Chalman. I'm the World Language uh, Department lead. I work at West Milwaukee and Nathan Hill High School. So I have the ability to teach global cultures all the way through up our seniors. So I'm six through 12. And I'm Colleen Stuff. I teach Spanish at Hale. Um, and while I'm pulling this up, do you guys just want to talk about kind of the start with the process and how long we've been working on this adoption? Absolutely. So I had the opportunity to um, come and talk a few weeks ago about comprehensible input, um, which we call CI, and how we are using that to support the learning within our world language department. Uh, it's really fun. It's really exciting. Last year, we had the opportunity to really showcase what that looked like in our presentation. Um, so we're continuing to move forward with that work because it is what our nation is working towards along with um, the world. So as we move forward with that, 
Um, we looked at multiple different resources to help support the learning of CI within the classroom. And we came down to SOMOS and BOSES being the recommendation. BOSES for French and German, SOMOS being for Spanish. Um, so we decided to do a pilot run this year. It began in August and it ran all the way through until March. And uh, teachers are actually still using it. So it, it'll continue to run through June now. Uh, so you can see on the um, PowerPoint, the teachers who did the pilot program. And it's really cool because at West Dallas Central, Engelkmeyer was able to look at it from the German and the French perspective. So she was able to use it together. And then we um, also just had the French one. And then I had the opportunity to look at the German separately outside of um, using it as the pilot program. So that was very cool. Um, just a fresh, like a reminder of CI and what comprehensible input is. It's just providing the language in various forms um, over and over and over again, whether it's through reading, writing, listening, um, and just giving them as much language as possible that is authentic so that they are absorbing as much as they possibly can and feeling more comfortable as they advance through their years, being able to speak the language and actually really understand. Um, and I'll just jump in on that one a little bit. And I think, Colleen, you were part of the original group that started investigating yes. comprehensible input. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and it we were looking for something with our world language department that aligned to our deeper learning work. So where does that fit in the lens of world languages? And the team started investigating, approaching teaching and bringing in some expertise to talk about comprehensible input. So now I think we have everybody trained and ready to go in that format, which just makes more learning a language more accessible to all of our students. So it's been really positive for teachers and for the students that we serve. Yep. Um, we aligned the GVCs that we worked um, on last year and our ICANN statements to um, the ACTL standards and CI is designed around the ACTL standards. That is what they use. So it falls into not only um, the GBC and the ICANN statements, but it also incorporates different PBL and deeper learning, learning competencies as well. Um, just it's a very beautiful, broad, amazing thing that all comes together and really showcases what we're doing as a district. Um, and we're able to use it with them within our classrooms. Go ahead. Uh, so the first recommendation um, that we are proposing for is BOSES for French and German. The reason why we're recommending BOSES for French and German is because they have the um, most authentic resources that we have found. Not only is it what other districts are moving towards, but also some of the teachers that we have here have used it in the past and just truly loved it so much that they brought it to our attention. And as we were doing our research and ca calling out to other districts and asking them what they were using, they were actually saying that they were moving away from what they were doing and really looking at BOSES. So as the teachers were working with BOSES, if you go ahead to the next one, um, they found that it had really amazing resources that they could use and pull to create lessons that were really engaging for the students. And it's not a curriculum that's a textbook, it's a digital like uh, resource, I should just say, that you literally take anything from it that you would like to use to support what you're doing from the classroom. The, cool, the really cool thing about it is it does have an online um, digital access station for the students that you can connect right into Schoology. So any assignments that are created through the program are easily accessible through Schoology, and then they immediately can get their results if the teacher sets that up that way. They can do recordings on themselves. They can hear stories read from native speakers. Um, I mean, there's just so many really authentic materials. The biggest thing for French and German is readings. It's really hard to find authentic reading resources for these two languages. This resource provides an obscene amount of authentic readings for the students. It is really cool, really awesome to be able to go to it and find readings that support what we're learning and what we're doing within the classroom. Normally we are creating them ourselves or we're asking other teachers for support and help in what they have done. But right here, this has already provided that for us so we can use that to help us within the classrooms. Um, and then for Spanish, we have uh, decided to request approval for SOMOS. Um, SOMOS has been around longer than BOSES has. It's one of the pioneers of the um, comprehensible input 
curriculum for schools. And it also has, like Kirsten said, it, it has a, a scope and sequence of its own in and of itself. And it really does allow for what CI aims to do, which is the natural language acquisition, instead of just being able to recite a list of adjectives or a list of whatever it is, it allows for for language acquisition, which allows for communication. That's what kids really want to be able to do with the language is communicate with it, whether they read it, write it, sing it. Um, and so Somos has a lot of those resources. It has a scope and sequence that builds upon itself. And it still allows for what I'd like to is it allows for teacher autonomy to kind of put their own twist on it. Or if there's based on their students' interest, they can spend more time on something based on um, student need. They can spend more time on something. And uh, it allows that flexibility while continuing the students on a, a journey of acquisition. It also, I don't know if I'm jumping, maybe I'm not. It also allows for um, the upper levels. So it can be used, almost can be used all the way from Spanish one through Spanish four or five, depending again on how the teachers want to implement it in the classroom. Um, the other thing I want to say about Somos that is really cool, I had the ability to go to my first CI conference this year, which thank you so much for allowing me to do that. And um, it was really cool to see that a lot of the Spanish teachers that were there already have been using Somos and a lot of their resources that they have are around Somos. And so there were writers there that um, wrote books that Somos adopted and have now used. And there's blogs and amazing vlogs as well, um, different articles that it's this big community of teachers where they're constantly working together and using this resource to connect this, like nationwide and globally. I think too, I don't know if there's, that's kind of later in the presentation, but like you had said was um, like, I'm part of a Somos like Facebook group. And then it's mm -hmm. always like, what, what did you guys do for this unit? How did you do that? How far did you get? What novel did you, I found this article, you know, and all these different things where you're, you're a part of this community and, and you are growing and people display, you talk about presentations of learning, people on there displaying their students' presentations of learning. Look what my kids did with this. Look at how, how well they did with this and how far they moved on the prof proficiency spectrum. Mm -hmm. So just a quick uh, rundown of the pilot process. We reviewed the different resources that were available to us. We chose to pilot Voces and Somos based on conversations we've had with the teachers who are currently within the district, but also the districts around us, and then also looking at it nationally and globally. Then we um, had professional development that was provided for both of them. So teachers did sit through the piloted professional development for both resources so that they felt comfortable going into the school year being able to use that resource. Um, throughout the year, they then had access to continue that development and being able to do professional development with it. The pilot process ran from August um, until it's going to run until the end of the year because um, we did get it extended because teachers really did like it. Um, we asked for student and teacher feedback throughout this process, but then we sat down as a team to get the final feedback of how they um, really liked it. And then uh, we are currently here right now saying that we really like Somos and Voces. Mm -hmm. um, and so the uh, in the first year of adoption for both resources, it's about 11.5, but a chunk of that is just in setup and professional development. And then it has an annual licensing fee for both that's super reasonable for the number of students that will run between three and $4,000 for the life of the contract. Um, and so that's very reasonable for the amount of support it provides not only to staff, but also the variety of um, access points for all students. And I do want to add too that the um, SOMOS, they continually do additions, upgrades, and things like that. And once you you have the license, then you just go back in as a teacher, just go back in and download the newest updates and everything. So it's really easily accessible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other really cool thing too is professional development is continuously offered for both products. Uh, so some of the student feedback that we uh, received were uh, that they think that it's 
really age appropriate through all of the levels for both resources. They liked that the readings could be printed for the students who like to have it more in front of them, but then also the digital versions are available too for the ones who like to be able to see it digitally um, and interact that way. There were so many different resources of songs, readings, poems, videos, et cetera, for all of them. Um, and then the biggest takeaway is that it's not about memorization. Um, it repeats words and phrases that we're learning and we get to see it in various ways and it's really cool and fun. And then they're able to then display it in the ways that they choose to, which circles around again of all of the project-based learning work that we have been doing and really looking at those deeper learning competencies as well. Any questions for this team? Questions? <clears throat> uh, just a comment. I appreciate hearing the, the uh, feedback from the faculty and from the students. That's really nice to see. Mm -hmm. And I appreciated the uh, the workshop that when you presented for CI. So I, I feel like I know a lot about it. And <laughs> this is just a nice refresher. And um, sounds like I'm in total support. Is this coming in at budgeted? Um, like a budget expense, like are we at where we had yeah. budgeted for? Are we under over? Um, we didn't really um, set a budget around okay. this one. We always hope that anything in the elective area runs under $50,000. So this is well, well beneath under. that. Okay. Um, comparatively to the other products we looked at, price was not, I mean, they were all somewhat comparable. This is actually more reasonable than a couple of the ones we were considering. So just wondering. Yep. Yep. Other questions? Comments? Move to approve. Second. Move and second. In. Any last minute discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Opposed? All right, that passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're doing four meetings in March. <laughs> Moving forward, 10.4 <laughs> history <laughs> resource adoption. Roll more state. Yeah, I'll thank you. And I'll just do the introduction, and then I'll add the base research seats at this one. You can sit next to Kristen over there in the middle, or select you right the middle. Thank you. <laughs> Ready for? Yep. Oh, oh okay. Sorry. <laughs> hey, now we're on to 10 point, whatever, the oh, next I, one. So I, I, I said that when you were. Oh, sorry. I missed that. I apologize. I apologize. Um, so this is the next option. Again, another one that we didn't do a full workshop on. Um, as you guys, I think, know, you have to update your AP text every 10 years in order to be aligned to the AP requirements. So some of these just come up as needs as we go through. One of the things that we've been working on as a team is going back to, as we've shared before, our curricular adoption cycle so that we can align it to the budget and make more, far more predictable expenses when it comes to the resources that our students and our um, teachers need in the classroom. So these were two that came up this year that are sort of a need right now. Um, and Adam led that work with two of our teachers. So I'm gonna back up and let them come forward and talk about their process. All right, good evening. Um, I brought with me two friends here, Miss Hansen and Mr. Kinsey. I'll let you guys introduce yourselves here quickly. Okay, um, I'm Carrie Hansen. I teach social studies at West Dallas Central and I'm here um, on behalf of Rose Misiak as well from Hale to talk about the AP Human Geography text. And I'm, I'm Bob Kinsey. I'm the social studies department chair at Nathan Hale and I teach AP Euro and AP World History this year. All right, awesome. So um, again, like Deidre had said, we didn't go through a full workshop with this one. Um, this is a pretty small adoption for us. Um, so for AP Euro and in my role really, um, as I work with Mr. Kinsey, Ms. Misiak and Ms. Hansen is to kind of guide that process. So um, I was the one who was like contacting reps, making sure we're getting samples, setting up, you know, viewings and things like that. So I kind of played in the background as, as they're really the leaders in that process for us. Um, so in AP Euro, uh, we typically have about one or two sections that run at Hale. As I've looked at the numbers over the past few years, we're actually growing this quite a bit, um, which is exciting. And um, we haven't had this course run at Central in a few years. Um, so we're working on that too. Our The current resource that we have is a, a little bit 
older, as Deidre said. We're working on catching up our cycles. Um, it is, I believe, uh, 1999. Um, so we are, uh, you know, this is when we decided to kind of take a hold of this adoption and get this into our regular cycle. As Deidre mentioned, AP likes to keep you in on like a ten, every 10 years at least to, to update your resources. Um, and so... Uh, what well, we looked at a number of different publishers um, from National Geographic, BFW, McGraw Hill, Cengage, basically anybody that was out there. Mr. Kinsey's in a bunch of Facebook groups, um, like Ms. Step was saying. This, you know, you have these teacher connected communities all across the country, um, and so we are recommending um, the BFW resource, which is an update of the current resource that we have. Um, and so just the, the feedback that um, from Bob and that we kind of noticed and when I talked with the rep is that um, it's rewritten or it's aligned to the rewritten AP Euro curriculum, which is obviously very important. They've revamped that. So this book, obviously the book previous to that is not aligned to that. Um, they have some more AP style questioning, which is very important. Um, the text is a little bit readable. Some of the ones that we looked at are like more of a college level text because they do use these books obviously in college or this one is specifically designed for for ap so it's more like that high school reading level um ton of primary resource documents and supporting uh, materials and then of course online access anything that you want to add about that at all yeah so um the book that we ended up going with i'm an ap reader um actually next week i'll be grading essays um this is like one of the more popular text that exists and it is a continuation of one that we have um the, the main thing really with the rewrite of the course is they've narrowed down the question styles that students are required to know for the ap test and a large component of this new textbook is to frame a lot of the ideas and content of the book or the course into these three styles that they'll be tested on so it's much more aligned to the current format of the test i also was able to use the, uh, the skills of one of our graduating Hale seniors who's going into education um, and is a fantastic historian. And I asked him to give me his kind of unfiltered student version of the books as well. And they corroborated exactly my interpretation of the books. And so I took that as kind of gospel truth between him and me. Yeah, the, part of the process was kind of cool as this student is, you know, wanting to go into education as uh, as their post um, high school option. And so there was an opportunity for them to really see part of that process, which yeah. I thought was super cool. And Mr. Kinsey described that to me. So um, so for our recommendation is a classroom set of like print textbooks um, and then all students having the online access. We're also looking at purchasing a consumable supplemental. It's called Strive for Five. So it's a supplemental material um, that all students would get. It's kind of like a study guide for that AP test. This was recommended by um, our rep as um, there are several school districts in our area that use this and they all purchase that book as well. So um, we're looking at purchasing about two years worth of that and then seeing if that's gonna be worth and, and, and getting us the results that it's intended. Um, and then in terms of professional development, um, they give you all sorts of free on-demand synchronous, asynchronous options. Um, so there's really not a lot of cost there. There'll be, we also have um, some cost for our leadership and learning department as we'll have Mr. Kinsey um, having the opportunity to rewrite some of that curriculum and align our guaranteed and viable curriculum guides to, um, to our new resource. So our total cost for seven years is uh, $12,567, which includes 100 of the Strive for Five books, which should probably get us for, based on current enrollment and projected, that'll get us through about two years. Questions? Any questions on that? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So um, AP Human Geography is our second adoption. Um, and so I got to work with Ms. Hansen and Ms. Misiak from Hale, and we typically run about two to three sections at each school, so about four to six sections, um, looking at the numbers for next year, right in line with the same. Um, we're actually trending a little bit um, higher in enrollments um, at Central as Ms. Hansen's working to grow that program. So we're about 140 to 160 students between the two um, high schools over the last three years. Um, our current resources down there below, this one much more recent, about 2015. 
Sorry, Mr. Kinsey. Uh, and this is our really our introductory course for AP students, as most of the students who take this are in ninth grade. So this is like their first taste of what uh, an advanced placement course really looks like. Um, and so again, we followed the same process. I really got to take a back seat and let Miss Hansen and Miss Misiak um, kind of talk about what they were looking for in a resource. We went out and got everything that we could really find um, all over the place, McGraw Hill, BFW, National Geographic, Pearson, Cengage. Um, and we are recommending Human Geography, Landscapes of Human Activity, which is actually a 2023 copyright. Um, again, the things that we were looking for, it's aligned to support that AP curriculum, that the AP standards that the college board puts out. Uh, the question styles are aligned with that AP style questioning. Got some really great graphics, charts, visuals, a lot of maps. We looked at a lot of maps over the last couple of months. Um, and the uh, one of the cool things about this one, having the 2023 edition, is McGraw Hill has um, they have an interactive typical ebook that um, where you can actually assign uh, AP style test questions. You, there's practice AP. AP test in there, uh, but they also have this new adaptive smart book in which um, as an instructor, you can actually have them highlight parts of the text. They can answer questions right in the text and the text will actually adapt as to how the students are performing on those um, assessments. Oh. Super cool. When we saw the demo, I was like, oh, this is very different textbook than what you've seen as, as like a static, like here's the online version and this is going to be the online version until we copyright it. This could actually Actually change um, using some AI. So it was super cool. Any comments or anything to add on that? Um, I think for me, the most appealing part was just it was very visually like exciting and engaging, and it kind of makes the class disarming for the ninth graders coming in so that that first AP experience is hopefully not like a scary one. I mean, like the, the pictures, I think anybody just looks at it and it's, it's a fun class. It's about culture. It's about celebrating People around the world and it, i think the book like does that in a way that's really helpful for our class and the alignment with ap is awesome all right so um our recommendation is again classroom set of uh print text for both hale and central uh, which puts us it's about 80 um textbooks we go at about 40 for those just to be safe um and so we have some extras on hand uh online access for all students to the interactive text and the smart text and then the professional development i think um some of our publishing companies are getting a little bit smarter and they're offering free online um synchronous and asynchronous um in order to be able to use that platform and that resource and so um, we are looking at a total cost for seven years based on 160 students, which is kind of where we're trending. Um, we've been at about 140 to about 150. So right, right around that area is $25,321. Yeah. Can ninth graders take the AP exam or is this more of a introduction to it or? Yeah, they take the AP exam, um, same as any other AP courses. I do think that the hesitancy to sign up for the exam in the fall sure. is like pretty high. So I'm hoping maybe this text and like them being able to see those questions could actually help with that. Yeah. Hmm. What kind of college credit would the zeal? Um, they get, it's the same as other AP classes for AP human geography. I believe the credit is transferable with a lot of um, like general social studies classes. So it's, I think it depends on the university, but um, I've seen it apply to like um, cultural studies, global studies, courses with that kind of terminology. And a lot of majors will require some kind of social studies um, credits at some point, even if it's outside of the major. Other questions? Move to approve. Second. We just want to have this sort of two separate things we're approving here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So moved and seconded. Any last minute discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That passes. Thank you very much. Congratulations. All right. We'll move on to 10.5 individual contract extension of administrators and at will employees. Dr. Luxman. Uh, yes. Thank you. So this is an annual item, comes around about this time each year, actually a little bit behind. This year, but it really is um, to give us the authority to offer the contract extensions. So current employees that are either in, under an administrative contracts, administrative contracts in the state of Wisconsin, have an automatic two-year kind of rollover renewal. 
Um, so this kind of formalizes that process. And then at will is really an employment agreement. Those are one year agreements. They're not governed under state statute like uh, formal administrative contracts are. But again, it's an annual item and just need the, um, your consideration to move forward. Any questions or look for a motion? Move to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that passes. Respond to 10.6, approve board policy updates from July 2022 is a second reading. Dr. Lexman and I see Ms. Marshall is coming over. Is there any questions? Um, this was in front of the board as the first reading in the committee to hold about a month ago, right under board policy. We do a first reading in a committee and then um, it's held in committee um, and for 30 days until the second reading. There have been no questions from any board members or anybody on the public is also welcome to chime in during that 30 day window. Um, there have been no questions or suggestions that we've received. Um, Marianne, I don't know if you've received any. Um, so it's for your consideration to approve as the second reading, the set of policies. Any questions from the board? I look for a motion. Move to approve. Second. second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Uh, all right. Opposed? All right. It's fast. So, hey, I'd like here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she and I have been texting, working on building coverage for the next couple of days before we've been meeting. So oh. she's, she's helpful to be here. All right. So that um, includes our action items for this evening. Now I need to, need to adjourn this and then reopen as a committee of the whole to discuss additional um, uh, other policies that we look at as committee also. Motion to adjourn. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. We are adjourned. And then I look for a motion to reopen as a committee of a whole. Is that a roll call? So yeah. move. Second. Second. All right. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes. Mr. Keller? Yes. Mrs. Kaiser? Yes. Ms. Steele? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Mrs. Carr? Yes. Mr. Sickich? Yes. Mrs. Lee is excused tonight. Mr. Becker. Yes. President Lee. Yes. Okay. So we have some board policies. Uh, oops. Additional board policy for July 2022. This is the first reading. Uh, is it just you, Dr. Lexnap? Okay. Yeah, so get this going here. And if there are any other questions, again, this is the first reading in committee. So with approval, it would be held for 30 days or one, two, six. Um, so in the um, bilingual or English language proficiency um, policy it really is clarification about implementation. There's some new language, but it really is language that clarifies implementation. Um, in the human growth and development um, policy, it really is clarifying the role of the Citizens Advisory Committee. Um, the independent educational evaluation, um, that is change of language related to costs. So sometimes those can be pretty costly when a um, parent asks for an outside educational evaluation. Um, and accountability reports, that's change of language around notification. So how we notify uh, parents of the accountability reports. Um, the, in the bullying policy, it's change of language around notification, um, record keeping and reporting. And then under notification of educational options, again, it's just um, how we are providing notification of those kinds of options. So go ahead and add in. Okay. Um, so I gave you a little cheat sheet okay. on this set of policies, kind of what is the proposed change and then what's the reason for the change. There's just a couple that I wanted to highlight. One of them is um, to jump the bullying one, we can start with that one. The aligning with what DPI intends, so this is not a required change, would be an annual report to the board on the number of bullying investigations we've completed, all of those things. We talked about that at committee. And so that's an option to add that we are advocating that we go ahead and add that to our policy, that there's an annual update to our board, given that we've had a lot of discussion lately around looking to make sure that those investigations are being done completely and thoroughly and that we're reporting back as we need to and that you guys are informed a little bit more about that process. So that's a suggested change that through committee we are recommending. Um, and then 2522 is library and media centers. So that's the process by which you reviewing books, all of those things. At the present moment, you aren't required to have a policy around that. We don't have one as we sit today. We do have a very thorough process that is serving us well. So as a committee, we are recommending holding that one, and then you'll do the library plan adoption, 
I think comes up again next year where you look at the whole library plan from a systems perspective, it would seem to make sense to shift that to a policy when you're looking at all of those pieces at the same time. So we're making the recommendation that we put a pin in that one. And then as Marty said, several of the others are just simply required to meet the new statutory requirements. So they're not really anything that we had an option to keep or to change within any of the policies. Um, and then an important one to note is 2660. We talked about that a little bit when we had our MLL team here last week with a couple of you when you went through the rotations. This one just really does honor the, the language that's far more reflective of our equity beliefs and looking at our students from an asset-based lens. Um, and then also adds exit criteria using the MIP, which we now use, which we weren't previously using. We started using that a couple of years ago, which is really more of collecting evidence of the student's performance in addition to how they do on access testing in order to recommend dismissal from services. Questions? No questions, I'd look for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded, any last minute discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that passes. And the last thing, Ms. Raymer, if you would please pause for yep. just a moment. For those of you who are unaware, this is Ms. Raymer's final board meeting before she moves on to her next great challenge in South Milwaukee. And as a small token of all the work and efforts and years of service here in the district, the board on the behalf of the board and administrative team, we wanted to provide you this uh, little bouquet to go with. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. My speech will not be Laura's under three minute speech nor a 10 minute speech. We'll try to make this short and sweet. Um, it has been my absolute honor to serve the school district for the last 17 years. And throughout the course of this transition, I keep getting asked, like, are you going to take your boys with you? Because you guys know my boys will be ninth graders at Nathan Hale. Um, so good luck to whoever supporting Mr. Lesser as he gets to deal with me now as a parent in a whole new life. <laughs> Mr. Fish keeps assuring him that I'm actually super nice to deal with as a parent. Um, and I said, oh, Fish, don't set him up for unrealistic expectations. But I am proudly having my boys attend Nathan Hill High School. I'm super proud of the work we've done here, of the foundation we've laid. And the more I've gotten to know Dr. Robinson, I'm gonna be really proud to leave my boys here under his watch. And I have his phone number, so that's also gonna work out great. <laughs> The way I have watched him come into our district and get to know the people first, which has been so important to us, and then be able to look at some of the foundation that we've laid and then figure out where there's room for improvement and keep the things going that are working well and grow the things that are not. And I have been getting, of course, lots of communication and emails, and it's lovely. It's sometimes I have to wait to read those when I don't have to run a meeting because I get a little bit like this all the time when I'm reading them. But one really, really struck home for me, and it was such a point of pride where a teacher said to me, don't worry, we've got this. You've trained us well. We know how to carry forward, and we're going to do that. We don't need you to be here every day to do that, to carry forward. And I'm misquoting that horribly at the present moment. But <laughs> it was that moment to realize that the team is ready for a new lens and a new opportunity to grow West Dallas and to be an even better than it is right now. So thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And I think and everyone agreed that uh, Ms. Deidre's fingerprints will be on the district for many years to come. So again, thank you very much for the service you provided here and we wish you the best of luck in your next endeavor. Uh, with that, uh, this is ending the business portion of the meeting, but we're gonna do the adjournment into, into close so we don't have to reopen just to do that. So I look for a motion a second to give you an executive session pursuant to Wisconsin statute sections 19.85 parent one, parent E, parent F and parent G to consider multiple student disciplinary expulsion orders and for the purpose of reviewing and discussing an organizational transition analysis, which includes discussions regarding specific personnel matters and staff, which if discussed in public would likely to have a substantial adverse effect upon the reputation of any students and persons referred to in such discussion and to confer with legal counsel who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy related to a DPI boundary appeal. Move to adjourn the executive session. Second. Roll call.
Mr. Becker. Mr. Keller. Yes. Mrs. Carr. Yes. Mr. Sickich. Yes. Mr. Burns. Yes. Mrs. Kaiser. Yes. Ms. Steele. Yes. Mrs. Lee is excused and President Lee. Yes. All right, we'll take a quick five minute recess while we get ready for a closed session. Thank you very much. Should be yeah, heard that's been discussed during closed session. So the first one, I would look for a motion and a second to authorize legal counsel for the West Oswaskwaki School Board pursuant to Wisconsin Statute Section 117.14 to appeal the Circuit Court, the Department of Public Instruction School District Boundary Appeal Board's decision to grant the appellant's appeal to detach to territory from the West Oswaskwaki School District to the New Berlin School District. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, that passes. And then I look for a motion for the second item we discussed. All right, I motion to approve new district organizational structure as presented during closed session. Second. second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that passes. And I look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. So second. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone.